Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our gameplay of Satisfactory 1.0. I've done quite a bit of work on the visuals of the factory since the last episode, and I did quite a bit of exploration. So we'll review both things real quick, and then we will hop back into production. So what I've done, we got the windows unlocked, because now that I have silica going. And so I went with the three frame windows on each floor. And that way, it's a lot nicer from the inside, because you can see out. And it's a lot nicer from the outside, because it actually looks like a building. And then I went ahead and added these beams to all of our open wall areas. So that kind of frames it and makes it look nice. At least I think it looks nice. So it's a lot cleaner looking. It's a lot more real factory looking. Um, yeah. And I added some belts to connect those two as a transportation system. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to stick with that or not. Once I have the jetpack, I'll probably do away with that, which is going to be pretty soon. <laughs> in fact, maybe even in this episode. Maybe not. I'm still a little bit away. But yeah, so I went ahead and changed all those so that we've got the frames and stuff. And exploration wise, we found a lot. Um, I was just, I, I told myself after the stream yesterday, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be done with sat Satisfactory for today. I'm already going to be playing like a lot so I can be done. And then that evening I was like, I want to play more. I want to, I want to do more. So I logged back in and did some exploration and here we are. Found two more summer sloops, eight more Mercer spheres, three hard drives, I already popped one in there for research and you know, an assortment of slugs. So it was pretty good stuff. I didn't find any um, crazy valuable stuff at the drop pod locations other than a few HMFs and some more aluminum casing. So hard drive finished with bolted frame and quick wire stator. Um, is that good? It's a lot cheaper in terms of the steel but quick wire. Quick wire is actually more caterium than regular wire is copper. And so 15 to make two is about the same as eight to make one. So it's roughly trading copper for caterium, but only using two thirds of the steel pipage. Interesting. Bolted frame we like if we have steel screws, but otherwise it's kind of crappy. Um, and yeah, let's get another hard drive popped in there and put away our stuff. I guess I'll keep, maybe I'll keep the Mercer spheres and sloops. I have a pretty decently large inventory at this point. So I don't know if I need to worry too much because of our wonderful dimensional depots as well. So great, we don't have to worry about, you know, those things being in our, all of our random building materials being in our inventory. So I feel like, in fact, half the stuff in my inventory, I could just trash it because it's um, not really getting used. And I got a lot of spitter uh, remains and stinger remains and hog remains. So we have a lot of alien protein here. I could potentially make a constructor for alien DNA capsules. I'm going to have so much. That would be a decent number of fix-it coupons. But I don't need coupons right now. I did just buy the, the windows and stuff that I wanted. So I think we're okay. I'll just get that all proteinized. And we'll put that away. Um, oscillators, I don't really care about. Random quartz I don't need in my inventory anymore. And we'll put away the HMFs, heavy modular frames, and the casing. Oh, and I found I did find uh, electromagnetic control rods. I forgot about that. That's pretty handy. Um, and then the leaves and the wood, I'll just ditch over here. Still have some biofuel back up here, which is nice. And anything else I need to get rid of? Wires, we'll just get rid of some excess stuff here. Silica, I already have in my dimensional depot. I don't need any of that. Quick wire. 
Iron plates, copper sheets. Yeah, we'll just keep our inventory nice and clear. You can also see uh, up at the top right that I have almost finished the versatile framework that we need for our uh, phase three, which is pretty awesome. Uh, looks like I'm short another, another few modular frames here. What is it? One to four? So a hundred modular frames will be 400 versatile framework. I'm also almost out of beams. So let's see how many beams we have. Nice. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two thousand more. It's six to one. So if I need five hundred, I need three thousand. So that should be enough beams, and that should get us there. Uh, minus a few frames. One more stack of fifty. Okay. I believe that will finish off our versatile framework for phase three, and then we can deconstruct that, and I can repurpose those frames maybe to go to heavy modular frames, and I can also undo the steel beams needing uh, all the summer sloops. Because I don't think I need that many steel beams long term, but for now it's fine. Okay, so encased industrial beams is the thing we want to do next, and that is going to require some steel smelting. Um, let's do... I still haven't set up assembler blueprinting. Let's do that real quick. We have foundries, smelters, constructors, so let's just do assemblers. Are they, are they just magically the same size as a foundry in terms of the width? I know that they're longer. Uh, wouldn't that be cool though, if I could just leave this the way it is? Production assembler. Let's see. Mm. It sure looks like those line up the same. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. In fact, they might be smaller. Uh, L2, um, one, I don't even know how you pronounce your, uh, screen name, but yeah, obviously they're different size, but I more mean the spacing of the two belt inputs are the same, and it does seem that that is the case here. And then, if that's next to that one, it does seem like they're closer together. It's weird that assemblers are skinnier than foundries feels like opposite day to me. But I do have to delete these. Alright. I know I could hold control, but I feel like I often miss something and end up deconstructing something I don't want to deconstruct, so half the time it's just easier to do it that way. Those are properly connected. And then... Now we just do the same thing. Input... Line up with that. One, two, three. What? What is going on? Why are those up? What the heck? I thought they looked a little weird. I don't know why those were up higher. It must have been... Way I built it. Goes in. And then this connects to that. Now it made this sound like it's connected. So I don't think I need to build a belt at all. Kinda weird. Um we'll see if that's accurate. I think that actually connected. It made the sound like it did. Okay, I think that's it. Yes. Yes, indeed. 
And we manifold the merger. Uh, let's see, how's that? Is that too close? That's definitely too close. That one might be exceptional. We can build that. We can. All right, perfect. Here, fiction. Except it's facing the wrong way. Okay. That's better. I think I already built that one, right? Yeah. Alright, nice. That should do it. There's our three assembler assemblers X3 blueprint. Some Assem uh assemblers X3, select icon. Boo to boo to boo to boo to boo. Where are you, assemblers? All the way down there. What is the sorting on these buildings? It feels it's it's not alphabetical, you know. Like, why are walls showing up before assemblers? The sorting feels so random on this. But like, smelters and constructors are near the top. Who knows? Who knows how that's sorted? All right, directory, save blueprint. Sweet. Okay, so now we've got that, and I think we're ready to make our EIB uh, blueprint here. Up on the top floor. So I'm gonna start with my assemblers BP. Which is backwards, I guess. Hate when I do that. Um, and probably put it. I want room for a depot here on the end. I think something like this, and then. We'll do our depot and dimensional depot, or storage container, plus dimensional depot. To contain all of our beams. Like so. Alright, so you guys are gonna need a total of... I should check the MAM. There is an encased beam recipe. I forget what it's called. I can just build a new MAM. Ah, uh, that's so much better. Molded steel pipe. Oh, that's good, right? Um, normally I need 1.5 each. So normally I would need 7.5 steel ingots, but instead I only need five. So that's two thirds of the steel. So basically I'm replacing 2.5 steel ingots with three concrete. That's a pretty good deal. Ethereum wire we've already talked about. All right. Research the next one. Anyway, uh, what's it called? Encased industrial beam. It's something, it's with a similar name, but solid steel beam or something, I don't know but it's just way cheaper. I forget what it changes. It's just a very good, very good one. Uh, anyway, we're not, we're not using it yet, apparently. So to get these guys running, I need in the ballpark, I do have quartz, by the way. I need in the ballpark of, oh, this gets blurry when you open the notes. That's funny. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I wanted to read that while I was looking at the notes. Um, whatever 3 times 18 is, 50, 56, 54. 
Steel beam and 36 times 3. Oh, that's chat. I have to type it in here. 108. Um, concrete. So, I don't have to do those exact numbers because I'm fine using some power shards here. 54 steel beam, 108 concrete. Let me remind myself. Um, concrete. I do only have the one recipe right now. I like that they show you how many alternate recipes there are. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, I don't. I didn't notice that before. So 108 concrete is a lot of constructors. <laughs> That's six, seven. Seven constructors, uh, one of them slightly overclocked. And then steel beam. I do have two recipes. Interesting. I could do the molded beam, and then I need even more concrete. Uh, do I have any concrete alternates right now? It could be worth, could be worth looking into if I'm gonna do it that way. I have the fine concrete, which uses silica. So three silica, which is basically two quartz, is replacing... Wait, is that right? Twelve limestone would normally only get me four concrete. So 18 limestone is being replaced by roughly two quartz. Okay, that's pretty good. It's just fr frustrating or difficult because you have to then make the silica. So you're adding a step plus an ingredient. But man, that's pretty good in terms of the re resource. Efficiency. And you get 50 a minute out of an assembler rather than the 15. But you know what? I have plenty of limestone. I'm just going to make a fat constructor array and we're going to call it a day. Um, however, the steel beam uh, option is interesting. I'm trying to remember what the numbers were on that. Four to one and instead it goes to like Slightly less than three to one. Hmm. So you're instead of thirty six, you're at twenty four. So you're basically replacing one steel ingot with two concrete. Mmm, is that worth it? Probably not. I think I'll just do normal steel beams for this as well. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, and then my blueprints, I have constructors X2, but not X4. I'd like to get the X4, because we're gonna, we're gonna need a lot of constructors for this. Point. So come down here. And then clear that. That really should have a confirmation button, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's odd that there's no confirmation, given how much work you could put into one of these. And we're gonna do... Constructors X2. I still can't tell the difference in build modes. If anyone knows, let me know. Uh, let's see, I want to build it that way. Okay, so constructors, X4. I just connect that, connect that. Connect these, and I think I'm done. 
I really wanted to, I could save myself a power pole and just use one power pole for all four. Do I care? Nah, I think that looks better. Constructors X4, select icon, constructor icon, set directory, go with the other one, save, and I'm done. Sweet. And like we said, we'll process the concrete on this floor, because we got plenty of space. Well, do I? I might not have as much space as I think. Uh, let's see. Something like this. But we want to make sure we leave a walking path. I don't know if it needs to be a full uh, foundation, but I want a decent path around the edge here. Okay. So there's 60 concrete, and I need 108. Jesus. Uh, I could use some power shards, but that feels like a waste to use power shards on this. Um, I do wish I could mirror builds. Um, I know certain buildings can't be mirrored, but these could. And it'd be nice to be able to, like, put some going this way, but the other direction. As it is, I have to make an entirely separate blueprint. If I wanted to do it that way. But I think that is how I want to do it, actually. Because they can all mer- I can reuse the mergers, that's why I want to do it this way. For poking into that side. So, I'll go to my blueprints. And do Constructors X4 again. I'll face that way. And we line things up. Now here's the problem. If I place it here, we're going to have all sorts of overlapping crap. And I'm just going to have to rebuild it all. So, in this case, I actually think I just have to manually build it. It's annoying. Um... Because I think it would be more work to deconstruct all that... ...than just doing it this way. Alright, and this will be 120 concrete. Which is a lot better. Liters. And let's see, that one is taking concrete in from that side, so this one should also take it from that side. Like so. Uh, that's not right. Is that too close? No, that's good. Control. These things lined up. This isn't too bad, but yeah, that's something Dave was saying in the Discord that I agree with. Um, it'd be nice if you were placing a blueprint and things overlapped perfectly, then it wouldn't place the new one. Like, kind of like it does in Factorio. It's hard though, because how do you determine the tolerance that's okay? But in this case, it would have been placing those mergers in literally the same spot. Right, and so that would have been a situation, and it would have been placing those belts in exactly the same spot. So that would have been a situation where it would be nice for it to just not build that, and then it would just properly, um, you know, attach to the mergers it's not building. Um, but I understand that 
Code-wise, that's probably, like, near impossible to do or something. I don't know. I don't know. Alright, power line on the wall. Connect over to this one. Perfect. Wait, is that powered up? Yeah, yeah, that's powered up. They're just red because I haven't selected a recipe. Concrete. Cool. Okay. That wasn't that big of a of an area since we shared the output that made it a lot smaller. Now I will need a crazy amount of limestone for this. Um like a lot of limestone. And then we need the floor hole. Where is that? Organization? Logistics? There's the floor hole. Um, we'll call that nine. I don't need that very often. It'd be nice if I could line this up. Perfect. So there's the output, and then the input will be... Mm, here. And I've already figured out the way to do that when I was trying to make things look nice. You do this guy, and then when you do the vertical lift, it puts those little rubber... On the right way? Yeah. Uh, it puts this thing, the shroud, that's probably what it's called, or at least that's what it could be called. I'm gonna call it a shroud. Uh, it puts the shroud in the right spot. Um, that's nice. And then we'll do a splitter. I think I kind of want the splitter right here on this corner, such that it is in a straight line to both. And that goes in, that goes there. That goes into that one. Everybody's happy. And then we can attach that, go down. And we'll need a crap ton of limestone over here. So we'll probably need to be overclocking some miners, is my guess. We literally won't be able to make enough limestone on this belt because 270 is only going to make 90 concrete so and i'm not willing to summer sloop it so we're going to be a little underproduced until we can upgrade these to mark four belts which is kind of funny kind of funny to be honest um but yeah anyway when we put this back it's cool because like the shroud of the vertical lift kind of pokes through the window and that looks way more like believable and plausible to me so I like the visual of that. It feels like it fits, and that way we don't have to replace, you know, a window section with a conveyor wall section. So I don't think that looks as good. I mean, it's fine, but I don't think it looks as good. You could always sort of keep keep the windows, because you can see through the, the ones you're not using. But I think I just like the window like that. And then... I don't have an easy way to get to the second floor, do I? I wonder, would there be... a way? Hmm. There's no, like, skinny walls. I want, like, a... I guess I could do the walkway ramps. That. But there's no half foundations. Guess I could... I mean, there's sort of half foundations if you want to do them that way. Because I can do... Uh, I thought I could. I guess on top you can make them 
have these. And then I can build out that and then underneath. And then this will create Z fighting again, so I wonder if I can fix that or if it will just be okay. Seems like it's just gonna be okay with itself. All right, not bad. That actually is nice, looks nice. I like it, I like it. And, do I have railings? I don't have railings, do I? <laughs> we need railings. I don't know how many tickets railings are. But uh, I also am done with the versatile framework, as I think more about tickets. And so what I shall do, you know what I could do, is just put another awesome sink up here to soak up all of the, all of the stuff that we don't eat. Ah, oh, it's too big. All right, just kidding. Instead, we'll just have a storage container we can redirect things into. For now. And, I mean, I'm not using these modular frames for anything else, so I might as well keep utilizing all this stuff. Because I'm using all my summer sloops here, so that's a really good uh, process to spend on awesome points or awesome fix-it coupons, whatever they're called. You know, since I'm using summer sloops for the steel beams and I'm using summer sloops for the modular frames and for the versatile framework, by doing it this way, I end up getting a ton of points for my resources compared to if I didn't. Now, I don't know the actual amount of points that each versatile framework is, but hundred of them has got to get me quite a bit, right? So you'd think. So you'd think. Let's find out. 130. Need 44,000 points. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of points. Alright, and I think I am ready to stop with the <laughs> the pointless iron uh, plates into the awesome sink. It, it was a great idea for the early game. It got me probably, I don't know, you know, I was getting 240 points a minute, so per, per hour, that would have been 20, 240, 2.4 thousand. 24,000 every 100 minutes. You know, that's not bad. But at this point, 24,000 isn't even one ticket. So, it really was starting to not matter as much. So now I shall just kind of reposition this stuff. The container will go straight in. And I could totally put this somewhere else. Maybe I should. Oh, and here's some more limestone, by the way. Here's some more limestone. We need to upgrade this guy to Miner Mark II. He needs EIBs. By the way, how many tickets did I end up getting? Three from that? That's not bad. All right, so some more EIBs here. Probably do 30, because I'm gonna need. Oh, I need more coal. I don't know how we're gonna do all this. I'm starting to wonder if I am regretting building the way I'm building. <laughs> I'm wondering if I'm having regrets. I'm not certain yet. But the way that I'm building is very much compartmentalized, right? I'm going 
from start to finish in one section and then start to finish in another section and then ore is the thing that I'm putting into different places. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should have just had a giant smelting of iron area with multiple belts of iron coming out and yada yada yada. I don't know. Wet concrete, interesting. You use half as much concrete it's produced in the refinery, which we don't have yet. Okay. And I can rescan all of these if I don't like them. Copper alloy ingot doesn't seem that important to me right now, especially because I have iron wire. Um, 100 a minute, though. Kind of crazy. That's about what you would hope for, though, because it's 30 a minute in a single smelter, and I feel like a foundry is somewhere between two and three times as annoying and difficult and expensive to build. And by expensive, I mean like power and space more so than like the production of the building. Uh, so I feel like tripling the rate of copper smelting is what you'd want. So it's not a crazy recipe. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want any of these right now. I may re-roll them at some point. But yeah, a Miner Mark II plus Power Shards gets us to what? So what's the power cost? 50.4 megawatts. But we get 150 a minute, even out of an impure. Yeah, I'm gonna have power issues soon, aren't I? I hadn't really thought about that. Um, our coal plant... can support... What do we, six... Six coal power plants uses 90 a minute coal and it's a pure coal node so now that I have mark two miners or even without mark two miners shouldn't I be able to do 180 240 300 from a pure node even on a mark one miner if I do power shards and then so I should be able to add another six coal power plants is what I'm saying that's what I'm saying there uh, we may need to put that on the list. Six more full plants. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. If you hit escape, it doesn't... Wait, what? Oh. Wait, it did save it, but it didn't, like, update over here. Oh, that was weird. If I hit hello and hit escape, it's not over there. In fact, it did erase it. Okay. If you click off of it, that saves it. But hitting escape doesn't. So that, that feels like a bug more than anything else to me. Uh, that does not seem intended. Anywho. Okay, so for the steel... What we want to do... I need another, like, ramp up to the second floor. And I need my flashlight. It's done. For the steel... I do want to do... The, uh... What's it called? Solid steel ingots. Just, I save so much, right? 50% more steel is worth some smelters. And iron smelts pretty fast, right? I only need four smelters for a full 120 a minute, so it's not crazy on that front. Um, so 54 steel beams is, what, four constructors? Yeah. So we'll do another set of four constructors here. Oh, and where's that floor? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this guy is gonna poop out some concrete here. Of course, these are going the wrong way, which is 
Is that easy to switch? Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to switch. Because I can build... Splitters onto the end of... Oh, no, I can't because of that. This is so annoying to me. Why does it... Why does it not attach further out? That's so weird looking. Because then the conveyor lift would be coming out of, like, half of the bottom of the splitter. I don't know why it does that does it that way by default. Um, so I do have to rebuild the splitters like this. Uh, which is... whatever. Fine, I guess. Then we should be able to deconstruct them. And then these are probably not connected, but if I build them again, they will be. Very, very weird system. That way, and that way. All right, all of that just so I can do this. And maybe like that, and then that looks even better. What do you think default is gonna be a little bit of a straight line there? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Cool. Okay, so concrete's hooked up, and then the steel beams. We said we wanted our constructor's X4 blueprint. Uh, facing this way. I don't know where it's going to fit. Let's see. Yeah, I mean... We don't need that space, so might as well put it right up next to that one. Click. And then that'll be the steel beams. We need to power up the uh, bad boys. I was worried that would do clipping. All the clipping. Come on. There you go. Okay, so those are plugged in. Those are plugged into each other. I will need my my walls here. Steel. I haven't selected the recipes yet, have I? No. Nope. Steel beam. Paste. 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 So then we just need steel ingots into that, which... Is a triple foundry enough, or do I need six foundries? Um... Goodness. 54 times 4. I need like 200 ingots. Yikes. Okay, so let's try our foundries x3 and see what we end up seeing here. We might need an x6 going on. Ugh. Nudge exceeds max distance. You just love that message, don't you? Okay. Try that. Alright, so when you're making solid steel ingots, what is it? What does it get me? 
Part of me wants to just do it this way. If I do solid steel ingots and then I do this molded beam recipe, I end up using so much less coal and iron. But then you use a ton of limestone, which I, I don't feel like I have a great supply of yet, so it, it's fine. We'll just stick with the solid steel. Okay, so each one of these makes 60 a minute when set on the solid steel. So that's 180 a minute. And I need... Basically just one more. Okay. So I'll just do four foundries. Although, will the supply manage if we do it that way? I need 160 a minute iron and coal. Okay. It's doable. That's doable. Alright. That. And that. And a lift. And a belt. Uh, what did I do? Oh, it's coming in from the other way. Right. This is not the output. This is the input. Input comes from the left. me configure it until I walked away and then walked back close. It had the little gear icon, but it didn't say press... Oh. There. See that? It's only letting me press E to configure foundry when I point at certain parts of it. That's really odd. I wonder if it's because I'm like... I'm definitely not looking at... I don't know. Maybe it's considering that some other... I don't know. I can't even guess what it's doing, but. All right, so we need slightly less. We need 10% less than what this is saying. So these could all be clocked at 90%. Um, and I don't need perfect ratios, but it's also nice to have them when you know what they are. So we'll just clock these at 90%, which I think I can just copy it rather than typing this in every time. Yeah. Okay. And so then we only need 54 from each of the foundries. So these get clocked at 90% as well. And whatever 34, 36 times 4 is. Uh, so I need 144 iron and coal to keep these running at the full rate. Bada bing, bada boom. 144 iron ingots is how many smelters? Um. Oh, and did I hook up the end of this? I did not mean to parachute. go. 144 is five smelters. For iron. Something like this. Um, it'd be nice if, yeah, those were lined up. Oh, but it's on the wrong side. Damn. What I wouldn't give to have a flip button. <laughs> um, hmm. Wait. This is the back. I have this rotated wrong. Right? No, no, that was right. Yeah, those are splitters on the back. 
Yeah, so if the output's here... Yeah. But then it still comes out the wrong side, so... It's, it's rotated wrong either way, but I also had it backwards. Uh, I could do a vertical and then just go across the top. That's fine, actually. And then... Just do it that way. Okay, so think about it this way. Like, in terms of foundries on the solid steel, we're getting 50% more steel than if we hadn't used this recipe. So if I wanted the same amount of steel, I would need... Well, I, I guess it... We're getting 50% more for the same input. We're getting 33% more in turn per foundry. So I would actually need another foundry and a third just for the rate that I would normally have. Plus, I would need a lot more coal and iron. And so kind of the space savings of this recipe already sort of pay a little bit for the space cost of making the iron ingots. It's not quite equal, but given you're already saving that many resources and then knowing that you're also, you know, um, where do we go here? Funny. Given you're also saving, you know, that much iron and copper, I think it's very much a no-brainer. Uh, wait. Which? What? Where are these belts going? They're going to the right. Oh. Right. How that works. So now we need to feed iron into these. I probably could have just done four and overclocked it a little bit, right? How many did I need? 144? So I could have overclocked one of these with an extra 24 a minute. I guess that would have been two shards, but whatevs. So iron here. This is output of iron ingots. Uh-oh. Why is that not... I seem to be incapable of remembering what directions things are going. So I need to flip this one backwards now. Wonderful. Which we already know is such a pain in the butt. Did I not do this already? I swear I just did this. I must be going crazy. Like, actually, legitimately insane. Did I not do that? Okay, splitter. Input from the right. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Oh, it switched on me. Oh, maybe that's what it was happening. That one... There's all sorts of confusion happening right now. That one's the right direction. Input from the right. Click, click, click. Input from the right. Click, click, click. There we go. Okay, and now that should go over. Perfect. That's all we ever wanted in life. Alright, so there's the iron ingots. Lifts hooked up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's iron, and then coal will come in from the other side as originally. So coal comes in over here. Wait, why is that not lining up? That's in oh, because that's the middle. That's why. So that's coal. Um. <laughs> 
Another thing I could do is I could have ore come in on the roof and follow one of those ceiling mounts instead. There's an idea. I'm not going to do it right now, but it's, it's an idea. Okay, so coal is right here, actually. So let me think about uh, I do this. Uh, and I won't need a faster belt, I don't think. Maybe. I want to say we overclocked this to B270. Um, oh, I'm in straight mode. That's why none of this makes any sense. Okay. Alright, go over here. And then connect back to where you were. Alright, and then we need a splitter. Right there. There's too steep. Alright, well that's because that's in the wrong spot. that? No? That's not right either? How about... There. Doesn't work either way. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it when it doesn't work either way. Um, that one's probably closer to working. Really? Okay. Um, that means I have to move this belt section out further. Make it more palatable. Alright, if this doesn't work, I will be surprised. There we go. Alright, sweet. So there's coal going up. And then... Wait, what did that attach to? Oh, I'm on the wrong floor. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I was very confused for a second. Um, all right, yeah, we need uh, a way to get up to the top, which we don't have over here. All right, fine. Get me up. Oh, come on. Hit something. All right. Go up here. I have a little ramp on this side. There's the coal that I was expecting to see. Okay. Um, I should do one of those wall mounted. And then go down to the ground setups. But it should be a pillar. Okay. Now we can get up to this floor. And what else do we need for all this to work? I think one of these guys isn't powered up, so that's a problem that we can fix, like so. Definitely need windows on our factory. Gosh, this episode's almost an hour already. It just goes so fast. if this floor is going to be the first one that I make uh, three sections, or four sections tall instead of three. It might need to be. I guess we'll see. Did it double build? I'm always worried that I'm overlapping. But... Do a slightly shorter wall on that one. And since I'm here, we'll do it right. Build the beams. Build the beams. That 
that wall out to the end. This guy. More walls. Alright, and this certainly will be a spot that I connect with a power line. Maybe to the same spot, even? Yeah. It should work. Oh, weird. It's, like, too low for my feet. Um... So you have to be a little bit closer to the edge like that. That'll be better. Get down real fast. Let me get up. Perfect. And we've got our nice little catwalk. Alright. Alright. Looking good. Okay, so I just need iron. Is that really it? Feels like that's too simple. But we are getting there. Power. I think the other, oop. The other side's powered up already. Is that true? Um, no, no, it's not. They're not connected to anything. Okay. And they're still red because that's not connected to anything. Fair enough. And they're still red. Now that isn't what I expected to see. Why is he, why are you red? It says no power? Oh. That's because these aren't connect. Did I forget power connections in my foundry blueprint? I think I did. Uh, we're gonna have to fix that. I just straight up forgot power poles. Um... Because I built the first three with the blueprint here. <laughs> That's funny. Whoopsies. Alright, now we're powered up. There we go. Alright, and these are not powered up, which means that's not powered up. Which makes sense. Because this is where the power is. Okay. And is that it? Are we finally going to get encased industrial beams? I think we're getting close. Oh, I need the limestone connection. Um... And the iron connection, but the coal... I think everything else is done, right? I think so. I think so. So, iron. Where do I want to get iron? I think we're going to source iron from over here. I know there's a bunch in this general area. Yeah, there's a bunch over there. I can actually see it. I see it from here. Um, and I know there's a bunch of limestone in various places too, so let's just bring the iron. And I said I only needed like, what, 144? Is that it? It wasn't very much. It wasn't very much. Excuse me. Bye. It was a quick and painless death. Just completely filled with shattered rebar. You're fine. What a way to go. Is this impure? Yeah, it's impure. The only downside to impure is that you use a lot more power to get the ore. 
and you need a lot more power shards if you want to overclock it. You know, otherwise four impure nodes is the same as a single pure node. You know, you just use four times the power and four times the shards, which is not great if you want a bunch. So I guess my question is, should I use... So yeah, you use 150% or sorry, you use triple the power for double the ore in a minor mark two, um, which is obviously less power efficient per ore. So you're better off using mark one miners if you can, but I think long term, it's just better to make things mark two to start. And go ahead and zoop up some poles here. See merger. Put that there. Connect that bad boy up. Power connection. So right now this is 120. Uh, I will add a single power shard. Make it 150. And yeah, I'm going to pause the recording while I finish building this. All right, and we're back. Welcome back, everybody. Um, so what I ended up doing is I just changed these limestone nodes over here to Mark II miners. And I also undid, we were constructing concrete with them. We had way more concrete than we needed. I just left the one concrete maker we have over there going into the dimensional depot, and that should be more than fine. And so now... Most of our limestone coming from these nodes is going that way. Um, wait a second, did I screw something up here? Oh, I did. We don't have fast enough belts uh, right here. Wait, we do. What's going on here? Why are we going so slow? That's what I was trying to do a second ago. Okay. That's the one that was not fast enough. And then this one's also not fast enough. I think it is now. Yeah, Mark three, Mark three, Mark three. Perfect. Okay, so now we got limestone flying in and that should be getting us concrete up there. Ooh, hello, sir. How did you get stuck here of all places? You always manage to get stuck in my base. They need a little bit better unstuckifying logic. They, they get stuck everywhere. All right, and here we go. This is going to be our concrete, which goes up through the floor. Oh, I just realized I did not get enough concrete or enough limestone. And then the iron is coming from a distance. And that's giving us our iron ingots. Then come up here. We've already got the coal. The foundries should be running. Yes, yes, yes. To make steel. I just realized I'm missing. Please. Perfect. And then the steel gets thrown in these guys to make the beams. And then the beams are heading over here. And yeah. We're doing it! Encased industrial beams, baby! So, yeah, that was a lot more work than I thought. Uh, I think moving forward, maybe after motors, I'm gonna start just mass smelting things and mass doing things in one spot rather than these start-to-finish builds, because it's way easier to just make a full belt of iron ingots in one spot. And then, yeah, so I think we're gonna have another factory building that's gonna be a lot larger. These are both, I'd say medium sized. They're not tiny, uh, but they're not that big, you know, when it comes to satisfactory sizes. That's 11 by 11. I'm thinking we need to go more like 20 by 20. Um, and then we can have a big lane of resources kind of going down the middle that we can add and subtract to. So sort of a main bus style uh, and we'll bring, we'll do a lot of smelting and 
bring those things around. So yeah, I think like a 21 by 21 factory, um, maybe to the northeast a little bit so it's closer to ore deposits in other parts of the map. Maybe I do that like over there. I could eventually move the hub over there too. Hmm. This is a fairly flat area if we build up just a bit. So this could this could be a good location. You know, we could get rid of those trees for a 21 by 21. Seems reasonable. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how things have been going so far, and we've got uh, probably a lot more versatile framework to get points with. But now we've got encased industrial beams. Yes. So now I can build Mark Mark IV belts. Um, I need a research Mark IV belts. I let me let me go look. I can't remember what uh, what the requirements are. I probably need motors automated for a lot of these milestones. So that's another thing we need to work on. But yeah, I can get rid of these notes. So motors are the main thing now to work on. OK, so the five and six milestones, we need encased beams for a lot of them. And we need motors. Yeah, so the jetpack needs motors. Oil processing needs motors. Mark IV belts needs rubber. Ah, I forgot about the rubber. So until we have oil, we won't be doing Mark IV belts. But that's fine. Okay, well, for those of you watching YouTube in the future, um, I will bid you all adieu. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you're here live, stick around. I'm going to keep streaming, and I'll see you all in the next episode.